Let's get on YouTube. Welcome back everyone, this is Lee, and yes, today's the day we will go over my review of the 7210 that I did a week ago because most of you guys out there are pretty okay with that review. You guys are fine with it. But there are some people out there, outliers, that are on these forums, on these threads, that are saying that such and such, my channel of course, had a bad copy, don't listen to him, this and that. Go to this website, they got a better review. And I got the link, of course. You guys sent me the link. You guys even posted it in the comment section. So I go and I read the link and we'll you no know, read it together. Let's see this summary. Let's go over this summary. So number one, the pros. Very good and even sharpness generally. Now, if you saw my review, I pretty much said it's close enough to the Tamron. So it was pretty sharp like the Tamron if you're doing portrait, right? Or if you're shooting outdoors maybe six to ten feet away you saw the part where i shot the rooftop that was about that was about 30 feet away from me pretty much the rooftop was about 30 feet away from me so in my own eyes it looks more or less the same like the tarama pretty much and the thing that catches me the most is they use the verbiage very good now what is a very good lens most of you guys probably forgot about this in grade school pretty much but let me just pull up a chart Yes, that's your very good. That is how very good this lens is. It's not an excellent lens. It's a very good lens. You, you, you're you, kind of decent. This is pretty good. And so there you have it. That's what a very good lens is. Now, look at the next one. Low chromatic aberration. I never even said this lens had bad chromatic aberration. It had chromatic aberration. It was not that much, actually. It was very little. So I did say that in my review. I just want to point that out. Now, the next one is modest vignetting. Now, I don't really cover vignetting on these long focal length just because you guys could definitely notice that there was not really much vignetting in this lens. And also, you guys could probably remove it in post anyway easily. The next one, low distortion. Most of the time, distortion will be in play when you're shooting much of a wide angle. I did not expect this lens to have any distortion problems from 70 to 210. That's just something that I do not check. And if anything, you could also fix that in post quite easily. The next one, reliable autofocus. Yes, I did mention that this lens, the Pentax lens, and the K1 has better autofocus than my D810, my Nikon, and my Tamron. I said that in my review. I don't know what happened to that information right there. I'm gonna show you guys a sample, and no one seems to, you know, notice that. But yes, the firmware was updated. Yes, the autofocus was very snappy on the Pentax versus the Nikon and Tamron. Weather resistant, yes. The 7210 Pentax had weather resistant. I do mention that in the video if you guys you know, watched it all through. And uh, the, the Tamron is moist control, so it's not as good as the Pentax, obviously. Hopefully you guys didn't think that I said it was the same as Tamron. Literally, the Pentax will always have better weather resistance than the competitors out there. Smooth bokeh. That is something that it was just, you know, same amount of blades. I didn't really, you know, saw any real difference to be quite honest. And it looked all the same to me, pretty much. Half the weight of the 2.8. Now, that's kind of given. I, I cannot go against that. That is, it is true. That doesn't, there's nothing false about that. That is very true. Last one, well priced. Now, that is kind of give or take. Most people that read that will be like, well, Camera Reel says, yes, I know what I said. That is when you're comparing it to the rest of the photography world, but you're comparing within the Pentax world, it is really well priced if you come if you think about it, because the 7200, yeah, that's quite expensive. Also, it has focusing breathing issues. So this lens at f4, you don't get that, right? You get the full 7200 range, 7210 range, and it's you know, it's almost half the price. So there you have it. That is a I would have to agree, most of it is pretty much true. That right there. You got a grade B lens, very good, gray B, 80%, right? Has low chromatic aberration, has great autofocus, and also it's well priced, it's light, it has fair flare control. So that's what you are getting with your Pentax 7210. Now, with the cons, see, this is where I do not get all the trolls out there, all those people that are, you know, you know, slandering my name out there, they don't even post up the cons. They just left that as it is, right? They just like, here's the pros. Camera reveal doesn't know what he's talking about. 
But I went to the website and they do have a con section, guys. And let's read the con section together. F4 aperture may not suit all. That is true. Not a lot of people want F4 lenses. So that's actually, that's kind of subjective. But yeah, it is a conference to some people. So that, that's okay. The last part makes me kind of laugh a little bit. Ed sharpness <laughs> drops off at the long end. Yeah, it did. You guys saw it. It did drop off. I did shoot at 200. It was soft. It was bad. Compared to a Tamron, it was bad. So, in conclusion, I guess I'm my, my review was pretty accurate at this point. I guess we all got the same copy lens. So, now for those people that are leaving those comments on those threads and forums, hopefully this video kind of, you know, smooth things out because right now, it's not looking too good. You got a gray B lens that has great autofocus, but it's soft on the long end. There you have it. That does, that's what my review basically said. And I was, you know, I don't know what, what is what is the argument out there? That's just so weird. But anyways, thank you guys for checking me back and I'll see you guys in the next one, all right? Take it easy. Peace.